Chloe again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. So the recent video series Rapid Turn Set and Run, I've gone over the advantages of gang tooling, how you can run Rapid Turn for longer unattended through the various tool changes like an automatic tool changer using gang tooling. Well in this video I'm going to use multiple part work offsets to produce these little nuts, not just one at a time but machine multiple parts on the stock. So it runs for longer, I'll make four at a time instead of one at a time. So the job will run unattended for four times as long. So let's just go through that now. I recently made a video uh, titled um, Tool Changer versus Multiple Parts. And of course you can have a tool changer and multiple parts. In this case, with gang tooling, we've got automatic tool changing and we can have multiple parts. If the part is relatively short, then you can uh, machine one part, part it off, and then uh, move the code forward and produce the next part and part it off. And if it's a very small part like this uh, nut, you may be able to have six or eight parts in a row. Um, so how do we do that? Well, it's actually really simple. There's, there's different ways to do it, but probably the easiest way is using multiple work offsets. Uh, so G54 is the first one set on the end of the stock. Uh, you machine the first part, then the code changes it to G55. You machine the next one and you carry on with multiple work offsets making multiple parts. Then the tool retracts back to G54 and you slide the stock forward and you're ready to make your next set of parts. So let's just have a quick look at how we might do that with the software. Software is not my area of expertise, so this is going to be pretty basic uh, sort of layman stuff, but it might be that that suits some of you. Okay, let's try and keep this fairly simple. So we've got the code ITTP nut one off here. We open that up, you can see the code is there. And that's just for making one part. So if we save that to our USB drive, and then we change it to rename it to four off, and then load it back in again, we've now got two files, one one off and one four off. So we open up our four off, we highlight that, and we go to edit G code. Now we've got it here, it's really only one off at the moment, but we can highlight, copy, and paste. And we can do that four times. I've just done that. So now we've got the code in there four times. So have a look at the numbers. This is pretty clunky. Some of you software engineers will be cringing at my way of explaining this but if you look right to the end there's about 2700 lines of code 
and I've copied it all except for the final move from here. So the end of parting, this final move takes it back to a position where I can slide the stock forward. So apart from that little final bit, I've copied it four times. So there's the original version and three copies. Okay, so we've gone down and replaced uh, G54 with G55 in the second section of code through to about 1400, which is um, halfway through our, there's probably a much more elegant way of doing it than this, but I, I just don't know conveniently how to do it. So that's the last one there, end of parting. Now we're on to the third bit of code, and we want to replace the code now, the G54, with G56. Okay, so, so now we're going to go down, and the next uh, 700 lines are going to code, they're going to take us through to about 2100. So we're going to, we found one, we're going to replace it, we're going to replace it replace it. Okay, we just keep clicking through. So it's finding all the G54s and replacing them with G56s until we get to about 2100, which must be coming up pretty soon. You get the idea. It's a bit hard to do this and concentrate at the same time, but you're splitting up the four sections of code, the last three sections to G55, G56, and G57. So I'll just do that now and check it because while I'm talking, I'm likely to make a mistake. Well, it doesn't actually take a minute to go through and change. So I've got four, four copies, G54, G55, G56, and G57. Now we can go to uh, find. So we go search, find, G54. Have a look on the slider here on the left-hand side. We go find. It's just finding them at the moment. So we're just checking. Have a look here. We're just checking that they're all in this first quarter of the code. Okay, so we're doing some quick checks. Now let's jump back to the top again. All right, so that's showing you that there's no G54s anywhere other than in that top section of code. So now put in G55, find, let's jump down about a quarter of the way, and we're going down there. See it clicking down there. G55, that's what you'd expect. Let's jump back up there again. G56, and so on. So you're just doing a double check here. Find, 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 find. Right, G57. Quick check to make sure there's no random G position code in the wrong place. G57, right. And uh, coming right to the end. Okay, so we've quickly checked it over. It seems okay. We're at the bottom of the code. The last G57 is there. If we scroll right down, just before it does the final move, after parking the tool, we want it to come back into position for positioning the stop. We'll just enter a G54 there, and we'll save that. Now that bit of code, ITTP nut 4 off, has got the uh, code four times over with a different work offset for each of the four sections. Okay, so we've set up the code now with the four sections of code. How do we set up the machine so it knows where those four positions are? Well, we've set it on G54, which is the normal position. We've put the tool to the place where we want to slide the stock to. We've brought it down to di diameter X of zero, and Z, that's the length of zero. And that's the starting place for the first code. Um, so we set it there. Then we'll just go in and engage the, the, the other uh, G55, G56, and G57 positions and enter those into the DROs. I'll see if I can show you that. Okay, let's see if I can explain this. So we're on G54 now. And we're on Z0, X0, diameter and length of the end of the stock. Yeah. It's a Y position of minus 110.32, that's set there, and the diameter is zero, or near enough, and we're G54. Now, we're gonna machine that part based on that um, G54 setting, and then it's gonna go to G55, which we want it to be six mil, because the, the length of the part is six mil 
further that way. So I'm just indexing it now, 6 mil on the Z. That's the only difference. And we're not going to go to 6, we're going to go to 6.4 because we want a little bit of machining off the end. Um, as you probably, 6.3 would be enough. So at that point, we want the new Z, the new Z04 G55 to be there. So we, if we enter G55 in here now, G55, enter, you see the DROs all change. That's because they, that's how they were from a previous job. So if we now enter here, these new new positions, this is X0, enter, this is Z0, we can just push on the button there and we enter in the value there and the Y of minus 1, 1, 10, blah, blah, blah. So you get that in there. So we just do that and then jog in a bit further uh, to 6.4 again, do it for G5.6 again for G57. I know that's pretty clunky and it's probably a far more elegant way of doing it, but you know, from a simplistic engineer's point of view, I can visualize that that's going to work and it's safer. Okay, so we've got the four different sets of work offsets now G54, 55, 56, and 57. Position all entered within the software. We've got the code nut one off showing the position. That's showing the position of G54 graphically. But if we go to the one that we've edited with four different offsets, four off, you can see there it's showing the four different positions of the four different work offsets. And that looks about right. So you should go through the code now and machine those four different positions. So that's a really simple basic engineering way of understanding it. Um, very inelegant but um, practical and easy to understand if software is not your thing. Okay so we've got these two bits of code here so we'll start off just running the first one. Say you're starting up in the morning run your first code one off and check it. You might need to adjust the diameter or the thread fit or something. You don't want to be doing that when you're making four of them because you're making four rejects potentially. So when you're happy with the one-off part and you've settled it in. Anyway, you make you make the adjustments until you've got that one-off code running well and then when you're happy with it go to your four-off code and then it will make four parts all the same. Okay, so we've got the part now machined to spec using the one-off code and any adjustments that we need to make we make to the tool offset and not the work offset because if we made it to the work offset we'd have to be careful to make that same adjustment to all four work offsets so you need to think about these things made the any adjustment to the tool offset got that part going now we can run all four of them we'll open up the code with the four work offsets and run all four together let's just do that now okay here we go won't be able to talk much but I'll uh, Get this going. Well, there we are, it runs unattended for seven minutes and makes four parts. And that means I can go away and do something else. And obviously I could make more per, per auto run, perhaps I could make six or eight parts, but there's a limit to how far forward you can push the stock into thin air, unsupported with no tail stock, usually about three times the diameter is the maximum projection for parting and machining uh, the part that's stiff enough to handle cuts in most metals. Um, probably it could get away with more than four, but a four times increase in productivity unattended 
is plenty enough for this size of run. Thanks for watching this series guys. You can see that rapid turn for certain types of work is a very productive piece of kit. Very good value for what it can do. It suits certain types of work. Remember to post in the comments if you've got any opinions about rapid turn that could help others. Thank you.